Using social media as a church has a number of benefits. For example, you get the opportunity to interact with your congregation beyond Sunday morning. But there's one particular advantage of social that most churches don't even consider. And what's amazing about this social media perk is that it can actually help you make better decisions in every facet of ministry. And here's the good news. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to put this overlooked social benefit to use at your church. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Tools. This is the show to help you share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills, joined as always by Brady Shearer. I saw a tweet this week that stood out to me. It said the following, social media is not, and then there was a bullet list of items. Social media is not. Social okay. media is not marketing, PR, photography, videography, Directing, editing, sales, copywriting, crisis managing, researching, uh, researching, data analyzing, graphic designing, brand strategizing, paid advertising, industry expertise. It's all of it. Yeah, makes sense. Social is a conglomerate of yeah. different skills, different needs packed all into one tidy little well that's why it maybe feels, not so tidy yeah, i know that's why it feels overwhelming right that's why a lot of us don't even know where to approach it because we we think that a lot of those things that social media is that you just read off in that tweet require a lot of expertise i don't know anything about marketing i don't know anything about about this and that and social is all of it so not only are we hesitant to approach it some of us don't even approach it at all it's like well i don't know where to start so i'm not going to start at all and that's why like, we love it so much and we use it so mm -hmm. much because it's so wide reaching, so multifaceted that you as a user are intuitively picking up on that. That's what makes it so useful. But again, it can be intimidating, but there's, there's one huge benefit of social that is kind of linked to all of those different yeah. things is that because we use it so much, because it's so far reaching and amazing and also terrible, because we use it so much, it is an amazing platform for mining research data and understanding about your unique congregation mm. and your unique church. Uh, there's this great saying by Gary Vee that I love. He, he talks all about marketing and social media, but he'll always say, look, I'm going to teach you how to do things, but don't worry about what I say. Watch what I do. Which is interesting because he says a lot. He has a lot to say. <laughs> he does say a lot. He's like, I can try to teach you the ins and outs of social, but if you're able to actually to use another one of his terms, reverse engineer what I'm doing mm -hmm. and then apply those techniques and strategies to your unique situation, that's gonna be a lot better for you than if you just like take this top 10 list. Right. And so at Pro Church Tools, we have this hierarchy. We've got social at the, at the bottom. And then above that, we've got these podcast video episodes. And above that, we've got emails and blog posts. Mm -hmm. And what's amazing about social and that the fact that it's like this bottom of the hierarchy is that I actually use it for... Just testing out ideas. It's like a testing ground. Yeah, exactly. So I'll try something, I'll post something, and, and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. If it doesn't work, oh, that's okay. It was a tweet, nobody sees it. Well, how, how do you know if it works or not? I'll look at the engagement. So I know based on my audience numbers, what a really good tweet would be, what a really good Instagram post would be versus one that didn't resonate as much. So just the way people are interacting with each specific post compared to the last one gives you that valuable feedback to say, okay, absolutely, that I've hit on something here. This is, this is a good piece of content. This is a, a question that people need answered. And that's just based off like I said, how people are interacting with it, whether it's a bunch of likes, a bunch of comments, a bunch of shares, we can glean all that feedback right from social. I call it the escalation technique, where basically I'll start really low on the totem pole, and if it does well, great, I'll move it up, and if it does well from there, I'll move it up. Mm -hmm. And you as a church can do this exact same thing. You can start with something on social, and then maybe eventually it could become a sermon series because people resonate with right. it so well. The key is not to just do what people want, of course, but to find what people resonate with yeah. and then making sure that aligns with your vision. Because when you have those two things at once, like that's amazing. Because like, for instance, I can post something, let's say about like, like, oh, one of my biggest engaged Instagram posts back in the day was like uh, shirtless Brady after I lost a bunch of weight. <laughs> Compared with prior shirtless Brady, he had not lost a bunch right. of weight. <laughs> So it got I, a lot I of saw, likes. I saw that. I got the feedback. People really like shirtless Brady. I need with to less be a weight. fitness grammar. So here we are. Fit gram? No, no, because that doesn't align with the right. vision of what we're doing here. And you know, you can get a bunch of in engagement on social doing a wide variety of things. But if those don't align with your church's vision, then they're not actually useful. But when you find the alignment, the intersection between those two things, that's where the real power comes in. And the reason I prefer this method over just asking people what they want, which is what we normally do, right? Mm -hmm. We'll have a survey. 
Right. Well, like say, hey, what do you want to see more of? Yeah. What do you want to see less of? The problem with that question, while it has its place, is that it inherently assumes that people have any idea what they want. <laughs> or that they would be honest enough to tell right. you what they want. I much prefer to watch people's behavior, track it, and then take their behavior and then install those learnings into mm-hmm. future efforts rather than expect them to be able to say, oh yeah, I want this or I don't want this, and then go from there. Yeah, so here at, like, at Pro Church Tools, we use social kind of like throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks, right? And then when we find something that sticks, we get to move that type of content up that hierarchy. So you the take escalation it from, technique. Yeah, so you take it from social and you turn it into uh, an episode that you're listening to right now. And if it hits really well on YouTube, then we turn it into something more permanent like a blog post or send it out via email. And But the way this applies to church, because maybe you don't have a blog or maybe you don't have an email list, you know, you're not pro church tools, but you are creating content or presenting content every week in the form of a sermon, in yeah. the form of Bible studies, even in the form of a worship set. And so a lot of this feedback that you as a church can get on social can actually inform where you head as a community when you gather on Sunday mornings. We don't want to just talk about this in an abstract sense. So we've got nine different ways that real churches have implemented this exact strategy Mm -hmm. using social as kind of the, 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 the baseline, the ground zero for seeing and learning behavior from your congregation and then implementing it in a variety of different departments and ways. And the first one, okay, the first one was in a church, it's just me. But the other eight <laughs> are churches. The first one though, so if, you, if you follow me on Instagram, have you ever seen me post on my Instagram feed a screenshot of a tweet? Unfortunately, I have. Uh, fortunately, <laughs> you have, because these posts do extremely well yeah. with engagement. And, and the reason is because I tweet a lot, but I only post screenshotted tweets on Instagram when I've seen a tweet that has already received a ton of engagement because I can post 6, 10, 12, you know, 24 tweets when it's, you know, Raptors playoff time (laughs) in a day. But I'm not going to post that often in Instagram. So I use Twitter as kind of this testing ground. If people respond well there, then maybe I take a screenshot and post that on Instagram. Going back to what I said earlier about finding the intersection between your vision and good content – There's two things that work here with these Instagram screenshot tweet posts. One, people have already, with their behavior, responded to these posts and said, we like them. Mm -hmm. But I'm also using a stop the scroll technique in that I'm using Twitter UI in an unfamiliar place, that being Instagram. And so there's two things working here, which is why the engagement is so high. It's not just because... It's familiar design in an unfamiliar place. And it's not just because people have already responded positively to this content. It is the intersection, the alignment of both things at once. Yeah. So there's this church that uses our social program. And if you want to learn more about the social program, you can send us an email, hello at prochurchtools.com. And all of the following eight examples are from this specific church. Okay. I went onto their Facebook page. I looked at the content we're sending them that they're posting. Mm-hmm. And I went through all the comments on their most highest engaged posts. These next eight examples are from the last month only. Okay. So they've been using our social program for months. Yeah. So what I want you to take from that is that there is so much that they can learn. So I, much I know feedback. so much about this church. I have never been. Right. I don't know who their pastor is. I don't know what kind of beliefs they hold. I don't. If you said this is their church, I'd say, okay, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. Yeah. I have no idea anything about this church except for how their congregation is responding yeah. to our social program. So good. Which scripture has been your greatest comfort? This was a question that we asked in one of our social posts. It got, you know, 10 to 15 comments. Three different people mentioned Psalm 23. Two people mentioned Jeremiah 29, 11. And two mentioned Philippians chapter four. Mm. So what I would do in this case is I'd use that data. I'd use that information. I'd follow up with these people. And then I'd probably set up a sermon series oh, in the future. Oh, we're doing a sermon series on this. On like yes. all-time popular scripture verses mm. with a deep dive of exegesis into each one. Psalm 23, one of the most well-known passages of scripture of all time. A lot of us know it off by heart, but how many of us actually know what it means? Exactly. Right? It's so many of our favorites. Let's actually take an opportunity to dive deep into this on a Sunday. I love this so much. So where's the intersection here? Well, obviously, as a church, we care about biblical literacy. Sure. But we also know that according to Barna, 58% of all Americans wish they read and interacted with the Bible more. Mm-hmm. So we've got this desire from... North America as a whole, we have this vision as a church to help people understand the Bible. And now we have unique 
data from our specific congregation saying these are the verses and chapters that have meant the most to me personally. And now you get the opportunity to take them even deeper. Yeah. Not using like a, a verse and chapter that you hope they care about, but that you know they care about. Yeah. Not just one, not just two. Three people said this specific chapter and so verse. So good. Another question we asked in a social post on this church's Facebook page, what's your favorite summertime activity? I recently got a DM from a person in Pro Church Nation. They're like, can you do an episode on how to put together a young adult activities calendar for the summer? Yes, it's this one. I've had it on my list for a while, and I haven't like come up with a bunch of great ideas because I'm like, every church is unique. Right. Ah, oh, Eureka! Yeah. It'll fit perfectly yes. into this episode. Let the church come up with the ideas. <laughs> 17 comments on this post, eight of which referenced the beach, the pool, or the swimming. There you go. So there you go. This church, what would be a great young adult activities calendar opportunity? What would be a great just church-wide summer activity? Going swimming. Something that involves water. Yeah. Turn it into a baptism. Got him. Another question we <laughs> asked, what is your go-to pie? Ooh. We asked this on July 4th. Apple and pecan were the most popular options. Look, all pies matter, but no, not those two. No, pecan pie does not matter. <laughs> People are going to be upset. <laughs> <I know. laughs> apple and pecan. What do you do? You buy a bunch of apple and pecan pies, and the next Sunday after service, you're like, just so you know, we've got apple and pecan back there. So and good. then people come up, how did you know? Wow. You literally told us. Yeah. You literally told us. And you've got people sticking around after the service, not running out the door, but sticking around. Wow. Having a piece of pie together. Engaging. Mm. Community. I mean, this sounds great to me. Pie-based community. And there's pie involved. I just realized. A pie-based community. <laughs> The best time. Uh, welcome to our church, Life Abundant Niagara, where we gather around the story of Jesus, and we also gather around pie. What about just like pie community church? Well, that's a departure. <laughs> I'm, op- I'm, I'm open to it. I'm not saying I'd go there. I'm open to it. But I, I just realized, you know what this is? This is like a framework for just being a good husband and listening to when your wife is dropping <laughs> hints on what they want and then giving it to them at right. like important dates. Yeah. I just extrapolated that into like a social media technique. Just pay attention to your the feedback that your wife gives to your church's Facebook page mm-hmm. and take that information and come through. When she says to your church, I like apple pie, you know what to do. We're helping churches. We're helping marriages. Mm. We're doing it all. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I also like this pie example just before we move on because it's a great way to like showcase sh- social media in service. Yeah. And a lot of times like we separate them completely. Like a lot of the comments and feedback I hear from churches is like, man, I just wish our pastor would like mention, hey, follow us on social this yeah. week. Like acknowledge that it exists. And, and we'll try to include it at the end of announcements sometimes, you know, with scripts that we give our video announcements churches and be like, and connect with us on social this week at, you know, Life Abundant uh, on Instagram. But it's like, that's, really not going to like draw that many signups. Right. But what you can do instead is like at the end of service, be like, hey, we posted this on social this week and you show a screenshot. And be like, yeah. We asked, what's your favorite pie? And hey, if you're not connected on social, make sure you are so you can answer questions like this. If you case. didn't answer this on social, there is not a piece of pie with your name on it. Well, maybe just your <laughs> pie wasn't chosen oh, because right, your voice, right, you, you didn't, didn't cast yes, your vote. Your feedback wasn't You stayed there. at home, non-voter. I didn't, I didn't type uh, strawberry rhubarb pie is the best and therefore there's no strawberry rhubarb. Talk about single issue pie voter. Like, <laughs> make, make your voice heard i know and then you can say and we heard you we've got apple and pecan pie yeah. back. and now people That's are awesome. like oh man like they're so much more likely to interact next time on social so now not only you got like behavior and response on social but you're bringing yeah. it into sunday service and now you've got this cyclical snowball effect it's just a bigger yeah. and bigger snowball so good another example we asked the question, what's one of the biggest life changes you've made in the last five years? There were 35 comments, mm. which is huge engagement for most church Facebook pages. People talked about cancer, spouses passing away, new jobs, moving to a new town, getting married. We did an episode that you spearheaded yeah. on this show called How to 5X Your Pastoral Care Ministry Using Facebook Messenger, where basically you would use social media as kind of a springboard for individual messages yeah. on social. And so here it's like, follow up with these people for pastoral care. Oh, you've got such a great opportunity here. If you have, if you are a church that has a full-time pastor that does a lot of pastoral care during the week, or maybe you're pushing the envelope, maybe you have a social media pastor and an online pastor. This is a great opportunity for your pastor to get this feedback and say, okay, actually this week, I'm going to spend some time reaching out and I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to meet up with Martha because she shared about how her husband died and 
the anniversary is coming up, and and so I'm gonna I'm gonna be there on that day, and I'm gonna take her out for coffee. Like such an opportunity here for you to do, I mean, the work, right? Like the pastoral work, the caring for one another, the praying with one another. Like this is it, and just just opening the door and giving people an opportunity to share. And you can see they will. There's 35 comments on this post. People will share. They're comfortable. They trust you and and you can respond. And then you can also, um, if it's appropriate, you can take this opportunity and even turn some of this feedback into like a, a testimony video. You know, if somebody says some of their feedback is like, yeah, uh, I got this new job. God really came through for me, blah, blah, blah. It's a great story. You can turn that. And we've done content on this. You can and turn People that, are always asking like, oh, how do you get people to be in these testimony videos? Like, this is so awkward. It's like, this is an easy way. Yeah, and and they feel like they make the first move, right? Like they shared it with you. Now you're responding to them. Yeah. They're like, oh, they're you're coming to me. You opted yeah. in. You like you self selected yeah. yourself. Like, yeah, so good. All right, another example: elimination post. We said you got to eliminate one of these four forever. Go, pizza, tacos, burgers, chicken wings. Thirty three comments. It's pretty varied in the responses. Yeah, a lot of chicken wing haters at the end. It's a shame, really. Okay, here's how I would do this. So I went to Alex's church on Sunday. Yep. Alex had his annual church picnic. Mm-hmm. Third best Sunday of the year. Third best Sunday of the year after Easter and Christmas. Okay, good. Yeah. I was just thinking maybe, I was like, maybe there's a wild card. Like maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe you come in out of nowhere and you're like, yeah. Valentine's Sunday. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> so let's say it's three weeks, two weeks, one week before the church picnic. Okay. And Alex has posted this social media post that week. He brings that social media post into service, mm-hmm. which again, helps that snowball effect. And he's like, we asked this question. You were all very upset about it. We had a varied <laughs> response. Some people said chicken wings. Some people said tacos. Some people said burgers. Some people said pizza. You know what? It doesn't matter because at church picnic, we're going to have all four of those nice. things nice. or be like, we can't afford or, that. Be like, or none of them. Be like, <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> it's like in my basketball team growing up, we, we all wanted number 15 because of Vince Carter. Like, to be fair, no one gets yeah. number 15. Yeah, we're having salads. So you did this to yourself. You did this to yourself. <laughs> if you could have made a decision, it would have been easier. But yeah. instead, we got to get rid of everything. Yeah. And this is exactly the uh, the church announcements formula that we teach, yeah. where you start with a story and then you lead to a single next step. So instead of going up there, Alex on a Sunday, and him saying, "Hey, church picnics in two weeks. He's it's gonna so be excited. crazy." Yeah. Third do this Sunday every year. year. Can't wait. Better. You know, it's not quite as good as Easter, or Christmas. It's Close. the third one. Also Valentine's. Maybe it's the fourth <laughs> yeah. best Sunday. <laughs> But instead, you lead with the social post. Yeah, put the post up on the screen again. Everyone's engaged. Yeah. And then you're like, hey, if you want to learn more about the ch- church picnic, head to lifeabundant.info. Also, side note, I didn't know when this event was. Where did I go? I went to his central hub. <laughs> you didn't even I ask found me. The information. You didn't even text me. No, nope, didn't even. I was like, I, have, I know where to go. It was the very first card on this dude's Featured nucleus. Card. It was your, I was like, oh, click. I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, opt in, get like a free gift card. I was like, I'm opt in like 100 times. <laughs> no, that didn't happen. Just, yeah. I just missed the social post. So I, I got the central hub part, but I didn't do this post. The that's what we do this episode. Next right? year. Another example, the would you rather post. Would you rather have the strength of Samson or the wisdom of Solomon? Split answers on this one. Half the people were like, if I had more stamina, I could do so much more like <laughs> good for the Lord with like right. community projects and like building things. Yeah. I don't know how to build things. You give me all the stamina in the world. I'd be like, this is my ladder. I, I can go in the first step. Yeah. After that, I get scared. Yeah. A lot of people are like, I want to be wise and have wisdom. How can this be applicable? Again, the church announcement formula on a Sunday. <laughs> you bring this into service. Mm-hmm. You're working that snowball effect. You're like, look, half of you said you wanted the wisdom. Half of you wanted the strength. The key is everyone's different. And we have a life group that fits your <laughs> need. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Woo! I am so ready to sign up for a life group. Like that's a story? Yeah. Everyone's engaged? Yeah. And then you point to that single next step. Hey, head to lifebun.in for the lifebun.in for kiosk in the lobby. Sign up for a small Head group. to the CrossFit gym to join the uh, Strength of Samson life group or head to the public library to join the Wisdom of Solomon small group. Something like that? Uh, I mean, look. (laughs) Not quite. (laughs) I think the big takeaway from this episode is that there are so many different application (laughs) points. So whatever you need to do. Right, Second to last example. Do you have a good dog or pet? Let's see photos. 47 comments. Yeah. Now, I was really trying to think how we could use this. (laughs) And there's really no, like, specific data you can mine from, like, 
they have a dog. Right. But you can't really turn that into spiritual formation. I think there's a ton of community building that can be done with this. Sure. You've got now what 47 photos of dogs and like one cat. Omit the cat. Include all 46 <laughs> dog photos. Put a rating on that on like, each pre-service dog. announcement slides. Yeah, do yes. the we rate dogs fun thing. And, and, and you know, put them like on the slides ahead of time. Those slides are boring, everybody. Yeah. Nobody wants to watch them. You start rotating through dogs, make oh. That's Karen's dog? Now. I didn't know Karen had a dog. Now somebody pre-service is seeing their dog on the screen. They they whip out their smartphone, take a picture of their dog on the screen because they think it's the coolest thing they've ever seen. They post it to Instagram, hashtag church is lit, hashtag uh, my dog is up there. And all of a sudden, <laughs> they're generating more social uh, awareness for your church because you put their dog on the screen. Got them. Hashtag we rate dogs. Yes. Hashtag we rate gods. Yeah. <laughs> like whatever it is, you know? <laughs> yes. Uh, if nothing else, every sixth slide, yeah. that's when you put in like, hey, send it for a small group. <laughs> right. People are so paying attention to the dogs. At least yeah. they're looking at the screen yeah. you now. You just flash it. You just flash it like super quickly, like <laughs> subliminal advertising. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram. Yeah. yeah. Final example. What's your favorite worship song that we currently sing at church? 23 comments. Nine people said raise a hallelujah. You know what you're saying next week. This church even got into the comments and they're like, oh, <laughs> y'all want, huh, okay. oh, I'm making notes yeah, here. Yeah. Now they're helping like, you know, dictate, oh, this is a song that's meant the most to us you in know this what? season. <laughs> it's such a great way to get feedback, especially in music, because I lead worship at my church. And like sometimes, especially if you're if you're workshopping a new song, it's like, I don't really know. Like, I got my in-ears in. I can't hear anything. I don't really know how people are responding to this song. I'm just going to close my eyes and try again next week. Like, I'm just hoping for the best here. And then I'm like, I asked my wife, of course, like, Rebecca, how they go? And she's my wife. She's like, oh, it's just the best worship set ever. Like, no, it can't be the best worship set every week. You say this every week. This isn't helpful. (laughs) I know. So instead of like, you know, finding, calling somebody say, hey, what did you think about that worship set this week? Like calling some stranger from church. You just post this on social and you're going to get, like how many comments were there? Like 25. a bunch, 20, 25 comments. That's great feedback for a worship leader. No awkward interactions. You keep your in-ears in, everybody everybody wins. And they, they, like these are all real examples yeah. from like a regular sized church, nothing crazy. Nine out of 23 comments. Like that is quite convincing user data. And because I run a business, any organization, like getting feedback yeah. from your users is so helpful because we all have blind spots or we're also deep in the trenches of doing ministry, of doing work that you kind of forget what it's like to like not be deep in those trenches. Right. You can't even see like out of the trench to see like what's up there. You can't see You're just the trying to like forest for the trees. You or... can't see the forest for the trench. Like right. it's, you know, that's a saying. Yeah. And so this technique requires like you're already posting on social. If you're using our social program, you know, we're generating all of this for you. And what you can do is I would recommend get an Evernote or whatever note taking application you use, paper and pen if you prefer. And every time you see a post that gets, you know, 10 to 20 comments, just start like logging all of the feedback that mm-hmm. you get because you never know when you're going to need it. Right. You know, we talked about all this, like helping you choose worship songs, dogs small group promotions, little church announcement stories, illustrations yeah. that you might not need this week, but maybe in three weeks that you will. Maybe the church picnic isn't coming up, you know, that elimination food post isn't yeah. super applicable, but maybe there's a potluck coming up. So this was one month's worth of content. So a lot you, of feedback in right? one month. In one month. Yeah. You do this for a year, you are going to have so much data and so much information on your yeah. church that you'll be able to serve them infinitely better because you can create programming that you know they actually care about. Yep. You can sing the songs that you know they're actually passionate about in this season. You can create sermon series that are going to help them understand the Bible in ways they want to understand the Bible. You can eat pies that they want to be eating. All pies matter. Yeah. Seriously, though. Like, we talked about rhubarb pie last week implicitly, and people were like, what about peach pie? And I was like, yes. Yeah, all pies, <laughs> except pecan. Muskoka berry, America. Okay, so good. Y'all need to come up here. Muskoka berry pie. That is uh, unique to, like, hyper unique to one small area in Ontario, and it deserves all the attention. Don't sleep on great pie. Hmm. Oh. It has to be a great, great pie. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. Who sells great pie? If you're going to get a great pie, it's almost certainly going to be great. Yeah, yeah. Because no one's making trash great pie that's true don't sleep on great pie don't sleep on great pie and don't sleep on this snowball thing strategy yeah. like do this yes do this and your church will be better for it and that'll do it for this episode of pro church tools we'll see you next time hey, hey thanks for watching this video appreciate it could you subscribe 
And could you give us a like? Like it really does, really does mean the world. Just spare a like. Yeah. You know, we're 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 dying out here. <laughs> Smash it! <laughs>